Hey everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sean. And we watched a movie. Yes, it's our thing. Yes, it is. We are also celebrating Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. So uh, we are joined today. I'm dressed as Little Bo Peep today. I don't know if you noticed. Um, so I brought a Woody. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> Uh, it's actually fudgy, but he's dressed as Woody for Halloween. Good boy, Woody. Oh, thank you. Yes. You know that Bo Peep is your love interest, eh? <laughs> yeah. We also had a Buzz Lightyear, but uh, he did a bad piece. So yeah, he's being he's punished. <laughs> Buzz can't <laughs> keep it where it belongs. Um, but yeah, we are celebrating Halloween. Sean has lost his mask. Yes, I did. I <laughs> left it outside. Oh, I see. <laughs> Okay, Woody wants to uh, go find Bullseye, I guess. It's a tiny llama, but anyway, uh -huh. so he found, he found it. it. Here it is. <laughs> yes. So we are celebrating Toy Story, which turns 25 next month, November 22nd. 25 years old. Yeah. Well, we did get the sense of that in Toy Story 4, that it's a whole <laughs> new generation of kids. It is. And it's for real. <gasps> It's that so much time has crazy passed. <laughs> to think of it. Um, when I guess back, it's almost yes. as crazy to think there was a time kids didn't know what Toy Story was, that there was no Woody or Buzz Lightyear. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe that anyone grew up that way. Certainly, Fudgy has always known them, eh, Fudgy? Yes, he has. <laughs> yeah, he's a big fan. Uh, so, Woody, Woody the cowboy doll. He is a pull string toy. Fudgy has a pull string. He does. He does. Right there. Yeah. He hasn't learned all the phrases yet, but we're working on it. Tom Hanks as Woody. Couldn't imagine a better guy for the job. Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear. I could imagine a better person for the job because I often feel like he is doing a George Clooney voice. Although I'm not sure if that's just the very strong chin on Buzz Lightyear <laughs> that makes me think of George Clooney. Uh, Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head. Thank you, Fudgy. Jim Varney, of course, as Slinky, Slinky. Dog. Uh, Wallace Shawn inspired voice casting as Rex the dinosaur yeah. with a, a complex. <laughs> yeah. He's got some he neuroses. Yeah. Just, he's a nervous, he's a a nervous, nervous Rex. Guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, John Ratzenberger, of course, as Damn. Ham, the piggy bank, uh, or the evil Dr. Oh, Porkchop, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And Annie Pops, Potts as Bo Peep. Um, so I have this Bo Peep dress. <laughs> it's just not a costume, it's in my for real wardrobe. Uh, those are her sheep on my big pink bow. I did wear this to Disney World. I did meet Bo Peep while wearing it, and yes, she was impressed. As How she could should she not be. be? Uh, yes. Although it is a little cool for Canadian Halloween. It's a summer dress. Of course, we expect it to be at Disney World for Halloween this year. We are very sorry to be missing it. Yes, we, we wanted are. to do that straddling the weeks of the last Halloween party and the first Christmas party. And we are going to do it with our nephews, my sister and her husband. It was to be a wonderful trip and now it is not to be a trip at all. And uh, in our Twin Cities here, one of them is not allowing trick-or-treating at all. Uh, where we are, we're allowed to give out candy, but it has to be from six feet away. So Sean is working on some sort of shoot. Yeah. I'm looking for a t-shirt cannon. Uh, <laughs> we're not sure how it's going to work, but we're going to get that candy to the kids. Jay's um, been making bags. Perhaps Fudgy will just trot it out to them. That's pretty <laughs> Not good. Not sure idea. if dogs count for so social distancing, I but think uh, that counts. Uh, who wouldn't want, you know, if we Woody could to, hook yeah. up a little wagon <laughs> that he could trot out there instead of just doing it one bag at a time, and who knows how many bags would make it to the end of the driveway. But anyways, we're gonna figure something out. But first, we're gonna celebrate Toy Story because 25 years is a big, big deal. 25 years, an enormous franchise, um, the beginning of a beautiful partnership between Disney and Pixar. Uh, this is Pixar's very first film, if you can imagine it, hitting it tremendously out of the park. This was the number one grossing film of 95. Um, and it was definitely a film that 
uh, right, everyone thought it was for everyone, and it was. It was. Uh, Pixar has this great history of making beautiful films for children that adults, that anyone of any age can also appreciate. It unlocks the kid on you, but there's also jokes that are targeted just towards an adult audience. Pixar has a certain magic where they can make that happen. Uh, they do work very hard on their stories, and uh, yeah, Toy Story is the proof uh, and the beginning of a very beautiful thing. So right off the bat, we uh, are introduced to Woody, who is the sort of unofficial leader. leader of the gang of toys in Andy's bedroom. I think it's pretty official. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the bedspread is Woody. <laughs> Everything is about yeah. Woody. All the pictures on the wall are of Woody. He is Andy's favorite toy because it says so on the bottom of his boot. Um, <clears throat> So it is a birthday party, and birthday parties make toys excited and nervous. Maybe there'll be a cool new toy to be friends with, or maybe there'll be a cool new toy to take your place. Um, and that's what happens. Buzz Lightyear comes into the, the homes and hearts. Toy ever. That's right, he's got a laser. <laughs> I mean, he's the coolest toy ever, but he does not believe that he is a toy. He believes he is a spaceman with a mission. He has to defeat emperors. I mean, it's a little bit like the Empire Straits Back, his mission. But anyways, he believes that he is a real spaceman and not a toy. And he does kind of quickly eclipse Woody. Oh boy. Well, he's a showman. He's got he all is, sorts of stunts and He's fancy. And, tricks. Mm -hmm. and even though this movie is probably taking place in or around 1995, it does mimic how, at a certain point, in the 1950s, cowboys were all the rage, but when the moon race started in earnest, uh, space stuff really did take over the toy demographic of little boys. Uh, and I hope little girls, too. But these were different times. Um, we know that Woody is actually a family toy. We suspect he may have been Andy's mom's toy. Because uh, it seems like she may have been the owner of Jesse at a certain point. But someone has passed Woody down to Andy. And until very recently, it was his best buddy. And so right off the bat, not only is this a brand new world for us, where toys come alive when children aren't in the room, uh, but we meet Buzz, who is going through an identity crisis. Uh, to some extent, so is Woody. He is jealous of Buzz, and he doesn't know who he is if he's not the leader of the toys anymore. Uh, and then there's this fear of displacement, not just one toy for another, but the family is moving. Ooh, that's difficult. So what happens is uh, Woody and Buzz end up being displaced. They get a little lost. Lost together. Um, lost together. Is it partially the fault of one of them? Yes. Yes. Maybe more than partially. <laughs> yes. Um, he's jealous. He's sad. He's a cowboy with no gun in his holster. So how, how else is he going to express his feelings? Um, so it's a wonderful uh, first movie. It's a wonderful movie. It is a wonderful movie. It's a movie. classic movie. It was immediately a classic movie. Yeah. Um, it was the first animated film in Oscar history to be nominated for its screenplay. Uh, well-deserved, well -deserved. I think. We talk about Absolutely. how good those uh, the stories really are at Pixar. It lost to The Usual Suspects. Uh, so don't you love this universe in which Toy Story and The Usual Suspects were competing in the same category? But there you have it. Oh, it'll be 1995 <laughs> again. Um, this, uh, Woody, of course, was Toy Story's own thing. So was Buzz so Lightyear. They're based on toys that could have existed, sure uh, but they are in the room with toys that with do all exist. Real toys. Yeah. yeah, tons and of them, not just <laughs> the whatever eight or nine that are the main yeah. characters. No. There's the whole mm -hmm. room full of stuff that I recognize from my childhood. Yes. Um, now, Barbie was supposed to have been among those toys, uh, but Mattel 
was like, I don't think we want her, who was their biggest moneymaker, affiliated with a movie they were pretty sure was gonna flop. So they said, no thanks. They turned her into Bo Peep. I'm glad, I'm glad I made the cut. <laughs> um, but Barbie was supposed to be very involved in the big final chase scene when Buzz and Woody are in the remote control car and they're trying to get onto the moving van. She was gonna get in her Corvette which oh, I'm excited about because I had a Barbie yeah. Corvette. It had a real working headlights. Um, it set me up to be disappointed in all of my cars in the real life because <laughs> none of them have been pink. And so far, Sean hasn't let me paint any of them pink. Yeah, that's a big mistake on my part. Uh, but they have all had working headlights, so that's Pros good. and cons, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she was going to drive off the truck in her Corvette and save them because they're also being pursued by Sid's dog, Scud. Uh, and she was going to save them like Linda Hamilton in Terminator 2. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be a whole thing. But Mattel, they really you blew it, screwed Mattel. the pooch. Well, Barbie uh, <laughs> is, as we know, in subsequent Toy Story. Sure, because so they were like, oh. We made a mistake. Yeah, this here. was free marketing <laughs> for sure in one of the classic movies. You know? <laughs> yes, um, but they weren't the only one to turn them down. Hasbro would not allow them to use GI Joe, which so... is actually a great thing in that case because mm -hmm. we got the Green Army Men. No, oh. Green Army Men are already a thing. They're a toy. Okay. You may be aware. Well, that's true. Yeah. We got Combat Carl. Combat Carl oh, is yeah. the G.I. Joe replacement, voiced by Carl Weathers. Yeah. I don't think he speaks in the first movie, but he does eventually get a voice. So, uh, sorry Hasbro. They went with their own thing and there was no room for you. Move over. And clearly, I didn't even notice. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think I told you this before, but Tom Hanks was recording his lines on breaks uh, while he was filming Sleepless in Seattle and A League of Their Own um, because he didn't want to have to do it while he was doing Philadelphia and Forrest Gump, which he thought were too More sad yeah. uh, to get into the same character. But I think that's funny because he's so mean in A League of Their Own and he's a pretty <laughs> happy guy in Forrest Gump. So it's just funny how he thinks of True. his char yeah. characters as a little differently than we do. Um, <clears throat> shockingly, Tom Hanks, clearly the obvious choice, perhaps even the only choice for Woody, um, but lots of people were considered, including Paul Newman. Hmm. Uh, in fact, they wanted Paul Newman to be Woody and Jim Carrey to be Buzz, and this would represent old Hollywood passing the torch to new Hollywood. Mm. Um, Glad that didn't happen. Jim Carrey is a weird choice. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe in 95, At that time, he, he wasn't was big. so weird. Yeah. I mean, well, he's just as weird. Yeah. But he was making <laughs> big So weird movies. of a choice. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but Paul Newman wouldn't do it for the small budget. <laughs> Apparently, Tom Hanks would. Um, Billy Crystal turned it down. He called that the biggest mistake of his career when he saw how good the movie was. So the next time John Lasseter called him, he did not say hello. He answered with yes. Uh, so now he is the voice of Mike Wazowski in Monsters, Inc. So I'm glad he got in. Yeah, and probably <laughs> good. I mean, he could have been in both movies. It's hard to imagine anyone else as Mike Wazowski. Mm -hmm. That's true. And we're very delighted with Tom Hanks. So it is not really a loss. Um, but a lot of these people did not end up doing Pixar movies. Uh, so I think it really was something that he like went on record as saying, I regret turning them down. This was a great movie. And so that really kept his name in the mix for future projects. Um, Steve Gutenberg felt like he was in a place in his career where he could afford to turn this down. That's interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> Oh, it must have been all that police academy money. Um, well, <laughs> it was something, wasn't it? So, uh, Clint Eastwood was considered, Sean Connery, Robin Williams. This is going a lot of different it ways. Really um, and it's so hard when, like, Woody really is, like, a mainstay of pop culture. It is almost impossible to imagine anyone else as Woody. Yes, it is. Um, as for Buzz, Chevy Chase turned it down. 
Um, which is the why, why Tim Allen said yes, because Chevy Chase was his idol. So he did uh -huh. not mind doing Chevy Chase's leftovers. Uh, Bill Murray was considered, Bruce Willis, Mel Gibson. At least those seem more consistent in yes. choices, From if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the <laughs> movie choices seem baffling. <laughs> yeah, it does seem clear they weren't really sure where they weren't could have gone a lot of different they ways. They could have. It could have been a really different movie, definitely a different character. So uh, it lost the Oscar for screenplay, but it did take home a special achievement Oscar. So those Oscars don't have to be given out and they mostly aren't. But just once in a while when the Academy wants to recognize something extra special that happened in movies that year, but there's just no category for it, that's when they give out this award. This is only the second animated film to get it, while well, Disney got the first a zillion years before for Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Um, so this was a special achievement <clears throat> for the development of an inspired application of techniques that made it possible <clears throat> for the first feature-length computer animated film. Um, so they were developing techniques as they went on this thing because it had never been done. Um, it took them three years to figure it all out. That's a long time. That is a long time. Um, but animated films are a big investment because it takes a lot of craftsmanship. It takes a lot of artists working together for a long time. Um, the Lion King had 800 people working on this film. And at the most, to Toy Story had 110. So computer animation really did, I mean, it was a huge a advance. Difference. It was a huge well, leap, right? obviously, because mm -hmm. now every Everything. animated movie <laughs> is computer animated. We don't even really Very draw, nearly. like we draw the distinction the other way now. Yes. Like, this is wow. hand animated. Yeah. So the character Andy is named for Professor Andres Van Damme, who is a Brown University professor in computer science and an animation pioneer who taught a lot of the people who helped make this movie. So that was their sort of ode to him. Uh, obviously, he is the grandfather of animated... Animation. Of yeah, computer animation. Yeah. yeah. Um, a little uh, thing that I really loved in this movie, in the first Toy Story, is that moving truck scene, of course. And if you look at the license plate, it is MLY1K9. And that is named after Molly, the canine, Molly, the resident sheepdog of Pixar. Does your workplace have a resident dog? No, definitely not. No! What are any of us doing working in offices that don't have dogs in residence? Uh, Molly is, of course, also the li like Andy's little sister's name. So clearly Molly was a beloved dog. A dog. I like to believe she's still there. So Toy Story 1, <laughs> 1995. It took home a Special Achievement Oscar. It was nominated for three real Oscars, the screenplay, of course, and song and score, Randy Newman, uh, but it lost both to Pocahontas. <clears throat> so 1999, we got a sequel. Uh, of course we did, it was a runaway success. How could we not revisit our new favorite pals? So this one um, <clears throat> has Andy away at summer camp, I think. So he is left behind his good pal Woody, if you can believe such a thing. It is hard to believe. It is hard to believe. I mean, I guess he didn't want to be bullied at summer sleepaway camp, you know? <laughs> yes. But as often happens when you let leave your favorite toy behind, a toy collector steals him. Yeah, that is the age old story. <laughs> and by toy collector, I do mean the guy from Elf's Toy Barn, Al. <laughs> Who dresses up like a chicken. Sure, for commercials, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and he's not so much a toy collector as a toy seller. <laughs> he's going to flip this toy. Um, so in this way, Woody finds out that he was a popular television toy, just like Buzz is now, but back in the 1950s. And so as part of this collection, um, Woody is being refurbished. They paint over the Andy on his boot. That was the most tragic thing 
ever. Uh, so they make him look good as new, better than ever, better than what he can even remember looking. And he meets more toys in the set. So cowgirl, the rootinest tootinest cowgirl in the West, Jessie, voiced by Joan Cusack, who is perfect. Uh, the prospector, voiced by Kelsey Grammer. And can you believe that up until now, our cowboy didn't have a horse? So he meets Bullseye, uh, Woody's best friend. So it's wonderful. He's quite happy to be finding that he has this family he didn't know about and that he has this popularity he didn't know about. He's been displaced at home. He was left behind from camp. Uh, but here he is being again, once again, front and center, the true leader of the gang. They worship him and they're going to be sold to, I believe, a museum in Japan where he will be adored by, you know, everyone all coming kids. in and out of the museum yeah. all the time. So what a wonderful life, he thinks. So even though he was kidnapped against his will and at first he's trying to escape, now he's starting to realize maybe this is not such a bad fate. But back at home in Andy's room, the other toys are in an uproar. They are missing their Woody, and so they are in a rescue. going on a rescue mission. Yeah, an out-and-out -out rescue mission. They are leaving the room, assuming the perils of the wide, wide world. Even crossing a street is quite perilous when you're a toy, yes, especially is. if you're supposed to go limp <laughs> any time <laughs> a human looks at you. That's difficult. Um, of course, at home, it's sad without Woody, but um, Andy's little sister recently had a birthday party, and do you know what she got? A Mrs. Potato Head. Oh, right. Voiced by Estelle Harris. So somebody's extra happy and extra cozy, because, like, they come pre-married. <laughs> yes. She's already Mrs. Potato Head. Instant karma there. Um, so they do affect this wonderful rescue mission. When they're in the Toy Story, they meet Barbie, voiced by Jodie Benson. Now, where do you know that name, Sean? The Little Mermaid. She voiced Ariel in The Little Mermaid. Now she's also voicing Barbie. My goodness, this woman. The <laughs> crazy prolific voice career she's had. So, yes, they track down Woody and help him realize that the destiny, the toy, the life's quest and ambition of a toy is to be played with, not to be behind glass and admired, but to be played with. And so he does return home with his old friends, but takes new friends, Bullseye and Jesse, along with him because even though Jessie actually has some trauma in her background where she was forgotten by her kid, Woody convinces her that he will, she will once again feel the warmth and joy of being a kid's toy if she follows him. And I think that comes true. I think it does come true. So it's a quite, kept. yes, quite a heartwarming little story, this one of friendship and if we were worried if Buzz and Woody were going to be friends or not in the first one, the second one certainly cements that they are partners, that they are both wanted and needed in equal measure. Andy comes home and he has missed Woody so much. It's kind of a lovely story. Um, once again, the song When She Loved Me, which I think is a really great song, bar none. Uh, this one lost to Phil Collins and Tarzan. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's yeah. real. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it might have been. So then we have to wait all the way to 2010 before we get Toy Story 3. The Revenge. <laughs> A little bit. Andy is off to college, can you believe it? I mean, if you've done yeah. the math, you can. It makes sense, um, actually. <laughs> yes. So his mom, like all mean mothers everywhere, they always want you to, you know, get rid of your stuff. Yeah, they find their Or they their sell your precious collectibles in a yard sale. Or they want you to come pick up your junk that's still in the attic now that you're an adult and have a house of your own. Moms are just like that. And so <laughs> he's got like the pile to take to college. 
the pile to throw out, the pile to donate, and the pile to keep at home. So Woody is going to college. He thinks about it. Think probably thinks about summer camp. <laughs> yeah. Puts Woody in the pile for college. The rest of the toys, though, get rounded up and put in a trash bag and wind up on the curb and the garbage truck is coming down the street and Andy's mom surprisingly springs for some pretty hefty bags because it's impenetrable. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, but Woody has observed that they were not meant for the trash, they were meant for the attic, they were in a to-keep pile. So he knows they're not garbage and he wants to all save his friends but also Andy from, from heartache down the road. So he manages to rescue his friends just by the skin of his teeth, um, but he can't get them back up to the attic. The best he can do is put them in a donation pile for a daycare center. So off they go. Um, and it's supposed to be practically heaven for them to, to be played with by little children again. It's been a while, I think, since Andy got into his toy chest. Um, <clears throat> Of course, they're put in the toddler room where things are messy and the kids are too they're rough. Demons. But to be played with again, maybe it's worth it. But it turns out that a new toy at the daycare that they meet, Lotso. The leader. The, the mean toy leader, Lotso, voiced by Ned Beatty. He's mean. He is a dictator. He is all kinds of bad. And so they ha they, they've kind of lost the will to live after being thrown out by Andy and now they've been through hell over in the daycare. They're almost resigned to their fate. But Woody, who was accidentally sent to a little girl's house named Bonnie, he's been living a pretty good life yeah, over there because she's Bonnie's a little got a great girl. Imagination. And Bonnie's got some great toy friends. Trixie the dinosaur. Uh, Rex is excited to meet her, uh, voiced by Kristen Shaw, Mr. Pricklepants, voiced oh, yeah. by Timothy Dalton, uh, Buttercup, the uh, unicorn, voiced by Jeff Garland, uh, and of course Dolly, voiced by Bonnie Hunt. Um, so Woody's having a great time there, but somehow gets wind that his friends need him back at the daycare, and so he affects another rescue operation. These guys are always having to rescue each other. It's amazing yeah. the scrapes they get into. Um, and they, uh, you know, things do not go well. They face death together. It is a truly emotional moment. And uh, just survive, barely. Um, so then back at Andy's house, Andy is driving to college. He's got Woody with him. He's got all his friends in a box and he is dropping them off at Bonnie's house. So they're not going back to the daycare, they're not going to the attic, they're going to a little girl's house where they will be played with and loved and cherished and meet these great new friends. Uh, but it's a little sad because Woody is going to be separated from the gang and go on to college and he knows, you know, he's Andy's toy. That's his lot in life. But then Bonnie recognizes Woody and reaches for him. And Andy's like, oh, no, that's mine. But then he realizes he's an 18 year old man. And so he finds it in his heart, not only to give her the doll, but to sit down and play with her and introduce all of his old friends to her. Oh, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. But it's a really nice passing of the torch. And that's how everything should have ended. <laughs> yeah, but. But, <clears throat> well, first of all, it was nominated for Best Picture. Lost a King's Speech. It was nominated for Best Animated Film. Uh, this was the first time that hit, that this category existed, existed for Toy Story. Toy Story. Yes. Yeah. One, of course. Of course it did. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was nominated for the song, We Belong Together, not Randy Newman's best, but it won! Take that, Tangled! <laughs> uh, and then, and then in 2019, they came back with a number four. And the thing
thing is, it's not a bad movie. It's really not. We get introduced to some great characters like Forky. Yeah. Um, and Duke Kaboom. <laughs> Bonnie's new best friend, Forky. Uh, voiced by Anthony Hale, who just thinks he's garbage because he <laughs> is. It's just a crummy craft that she made in kindergarten, but it's her new best toy. And so the gang tries their best to integrate him into toy life, but he just keeps trying to garbage himself. <laughs> um, and then they're going on like an RV trip with Bonnie's family, which is very exciting. They have left the neighborhood. They are exploring the wide, wide world. And uh, so they're parked near a carnival where we meet Ducky and Bunny, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key and Jordan Peele. Wonderful characters, great voice work. It's so great to see them as a team again. Yes, it is. Uh, and then Woody comes across Bo Peep, and we have not seen her in the series in a while. But he finds her in an antique store. <clears throat> near the carnival and she does not want to go back to the RV with him she is happy in her new independent life even though it does seem a little sad and solitary she seems happy with her independence and we do see her like kind of out there kicking ass with her sidekick Giggle McDimples oh, yeah. Giggle McDimples the, the oh, tiny uh, Polly Pocket officer. police officer <laughs> voiced by Ali Mackey um, but inside the antique store, things are a little more dicey because they're basically run by Gabby Gabby, a uh, talking doll with a big attitude, voiced by Christina Hendricks. Um, and that's where we also meet Duke Kaboom, who we love, of course, because he's the great Canadian daredevil voiced by the great Canadian Keanu Reeves. Although I do hear that, um, <clears throat> what's his face? Evil Knievel is suing the estate, the estate is, suing. is suing them. Which well, is ridiculous. You know what? There's more than one stunt guy. <laughs> it's <sighs> yeah. just sad. Yes. Let's let that go. But, anyways, it's a quite a nice story. It's not, I don't feel, maybe up to the great standards that they set, the high bar with Toy Story 3, which is just everything any movie should be. And especially a beautiful way to wrap up a series that the whole world has loved together. So, number four comes in, and you know, it's a cute story. It would have been a pretty good second movie. I don't know if we should really tack on this story to the wonderfulness that the third one was. And then we get to the end, and I will just say, spoiler alert, everyone, if you haven't seen Toy Story 4 yet, turn away, because uh, I'm about to break your heart. It broke mine. It broke mine, because in the end, Woody chooses to stay with Bo Peep and to see the world and to not return to the RV and be Bonnie's toy. Um, I thought that was very out of character for Woody, who obviously this whole series, he has been the proponent of a toy's fate is with his person, and there's no better expression than to be played with by a kid, and now he's abandoning his principles, but also his friends, his chosen family, the people he has spent all of these years with, and he's leaving them. Oh boy, I could hardly take it. And I was like super emotional to see Buzz and Woody say goodbye to each other, but also super mad that, that this is how now Toy Story ends. I didn't really appreciate that. No, you didn't. I did not. I've been very vocal about it. But you know what? I don't think people generally really appreciated that. Um, it was not even nominated for uh, an animated picture at the Oscars. Not nominated. Um, I, it wouldn't have won because that's the year we got Into the Spider-Verse, which was phenomenal. Yep. And it was a groundbreaking movie. It's the new... It's the new Toy Story. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't even nominated. Sorry. Um, we just didn't need this. We didn't need the fourth. No, we but, didn't need the fourth. I mean, it's uh, nice to go back, but the way that it ended is hard. And as you said, the third one was the perfect ending to mm -hmm. this trilogy. Yes. 
So, I mean, I do wonder if, if some of you really liked having number four. Maybe kids really liked number four. They don't have the same um, history and relationship with these movies that we do. Uh, those of us who have lived with them our whole lives. Um, but I can totally see there being fans of it because it's not a bad movie. I just felt like the ending is what killed me. And I loved meeting all of these new characters and it was fun to see toys like out of their comfort zone and discovering and new it things. It does bring in this really big existential question with Forky <laughs> of how is he alive? <laughs> well, he's alive because Bonnie loves him. Wow. Well. And wants to play with him. So he is a toy now. Okay. Anyways. We are celebrating both Halloween and Toy Story, and really 25 years of the movies, but also 25 years of Halloween costumes. Um, have any of you gone as someone from Toy Story? Because really, I'm sure many of you have. You will by now see that we have two dogs dressing up as Toy Story's buddy, buddy, buddy. Woody and Buzz, I guess that's where I got buddy. Woody and Buzz. Um, but yeah, I mean, please tweet at us. I'll put our Twitter below. All of your dog costumes. <laughs> if you don't have a dog, we'll take kids. If you don't have kids, we'll take ferns. You know, whatever. Whatever. Um, but let's celebrate Toy Story. 25 years is a big deal, right? So we are giving away. Oh, Ooh. look at that. So cute. Ooh. This is a mug set. So it's a Woody mug and Woody socks. So it's like Woody's um, boots and it does say Andy on the bottom. That's nice. So cute. And then, cause I can't really help myself. This is uh, the remix, the Funko Pop oh, yeah. the remixes that I just love to bits and pieces. Cause it's the little green alien guy from Toy Story. And they have them dressed up in any number of other Pixar costumes. It is so great to see. This one he is dressed up as Wally. -E. Your favorite. Yeah. So it's super cute. I love this one. So it's just a little keychain. <clears throat> and then for the big Funko, because you gotta have a big Funko, we do of course have Duke Kaboom. Kaboom. So you can remember your favorite Canadian ah. assholes. Um, we love this guy so much. You got a little maple leaf right on his belt. But yes, he is one of our favorites. One of the good things that came out of the fourth installment. So let us know in the comments which of the Toy Story movies is your favorite, and we will consider you entered in the contest. Good luck, everyone, and thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye.